Good morning to your church. We're about to get started with service this morning. Before we do, I'd just like to open us up in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord. We bless you for this morning, Lord, that we get to worship you, Lord. Father God, I thank you for ministering to us this, this Cure Conference, Lord, that we just got back from, Lord. Lord, I pray that you just give us a revision of 2020, Lord. Show us what you want us to, want us to do, Jesus. Father God, I pray that you can guide us in where this church is going, Lord. I pray that you stir something in us, Lord. Help reach more souls, Jesus. Father God, we give you all praise this morning. I encourage you guys, just wherever you're at, just lift up your hands this morning. Just get in tune with Jesus this morning.
God is just so amazing. It's just so crazy how God works. Giant, giant fall when he stands. So I just want to sing this part again, but please really listen to these lyrics and let it minister to you. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won, I am who you say I am. Oh, you crown me with confidence. I am seated in your heavenly place, undefeated with the one. guys just wherever you are. If you're watching online, if you're here in the building with us, just to lift up your hands, just glorify God this morning. God, you have been so good to us, Lord. God, we thank you for waking us up this morning. Lord, we thank you for blessing us with this life that you've given us, Jesus. Father God, I pray that we can come to a humbling of ourselves, Jesus, just to give it back to you this morning, Lord. Father God, I pray for a conviction in all of our hearts, Jesus. tries to roll over my bones when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own when brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shamed no I won't be shamed when darkness when darkness tries to roll Oh! 
to look forward to, and that's Jesus. So when we sing this again, we gotta shout it out. We gotta declare this. We gotta sing this song with authority because we give all our problems to Jesus. We don't, we don't have fear when Jesus takes over. So when we sing this again, I want you guys to shout this song with authority. Listen, this is not just a song we're singing when we come to church. When we come to worship God, we're making a declaration. We are saying, you know, speaking out of faith. Amen? And we're believing God. My fear doesn't have a chance. We're making a proclamation. We are saying, when I stand in your love, fear has, fear has no place to hide. Uh, come on, these are powerful words that we are singing. And I encourage you guys, when you worship God, listen. Listen to the words. They, they bring life to us. The Bible says we worship God in spirit and in truth. We have to be prepared for worship. And we don't know what happened in our homes this morning. But when we come and we pray and we seek God, we bring his presence into this place, we are able to worship God. Amen. It's our responsibility to establish God's presence in our home, wherever we went, we're at. It's our responsibility. So when you begin to worship God, they're not just words you're singing. You're not just standing there. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I, you know, we're not just saying these words. But we're singing it and believing what we're singing, and that's giving honor to God. Amen. So, Father, we just come before you, Lord, and we thank you that we're able to worship. 
We're, th we're thankful, God, that we're able to be in this beautiful place, God, worshiping you. And God, just proclaiming things into existence, God. Lord, even though we may be fearful, even though things may come against us, God, you are the way, you are the truth, and you are the life. And Lord, we just give you glory because there is no other, nothing in this world that can satisfy us. There is nothing in this world that can fill us, God, with your strength, God, with your joy, God, because our joy comes from God. worshiping God. Come on, God wants to do new things in our life. God has a plan for each and every one of us. Whether we may be going through a hard time in our life, God still has a plan. And God is going to always, always be faithful. His word is faithful. It doesn't matter. Listen, it does not matter what's going on. God has proven himself to be faithful and a provider and a deliverer. Come on and a restorer. God has proven himself to be the healer. Nothing is impossible for God, and I just want to encourage you guys. Turn to somebody and just tell them. If you're at home watching online, tell your kids, tell your husband, tell your mama. God is always faithful. Nothing is impossible for God. Believe the words that you are speaking because there is power in your words, and let those words Good words fall on good ground, amen. There's only one name that breaks every chain. There's only one name sets me free today. are back and so are the harbors but it, we had a great time out there in uh, Kansas City to get reconnected with our mother church and our other churches that are out on the field out in the mission field and just doing a work in their city but we're glad to be back we're thankful so uh, if I can uh, hopefully you guys are thankful that we're back <laughs> everybody's everybody's on their phone it's like I know that you're getting I know you're getting situated but uh, uh you know it's like we are back and then you know it's like man God gave us a new fire a new desire you know just for the people of the world uh, uh, people here in Nashville and just to think that what if your life is that valuable that you know that God can use you because sometimes we look at like man we're going through life and God can't use me. Oh, I'm just a church goer. I just take up uh, some space in church. And, you know, yeah, it's a good word. God can move and so forth. But what if you were to value, you look at your life and like, man, I don't value it as much as God can use me. And God can use you. God will use you. Yet God chooses to use you. But sometimes we kind of look at ourselves like, man, it's not a big deal. It's not that big of a deal. You are a big deal to people. 
that you might not know. Your exampleship, your testimony, your faithfulness. See, because a lot of people don't know who Jesus is, but they know who you are. And when they start looking at the life, and when they start seeing, like my wife was saying, what you start speaking, you're giving them, you're, you're speaking, your voice is be becoming like, kind of like a, you're casting vision in their life. Oh man, our God is good, our God is great, service was great. You come home, you go back home and you start saying, man, service was great, God moved. You start speaking it, people are hearing that voice. So they're, they're trying to envision, well, why was service good? Well, why was service great? Well, why do you have so much joy in your life? You know, I mean, did you ever go home and say, man, service was terrible, right? I've never said that. Not once have I ever said that because I know that the presence of God is always there. So I encourage you to be the voice that God has called you to be. And I wanted to share with, with you all, before we get into today's message, how God moved in Kansas City. It was powerful and it was awesome, right? Now, those are the two words. If you're a uh, uh, Christian lingo, you'll always hear, oh, it was awesome. It was powerful. Well, what other words were there? It was life-changing. It was challenging. It was moving. Inspirational, humbling. God got a hold of me. So before you hear it from me, I would like um, Sister Desiree to come on up and my wife, Pastor Maria, come on up. Uh, they wanted to share of what the Lord had done in uh, the services out there and just experiencing Kansas City. And I say this because I want you guys to be part of what's going on in Kansas City as well uh, for next year. So prepare for it. Here we go. Good morning. Good morning. Man, there's so many notes and to summarize them quickly is impossible. Um discipleship taking the apron that has been given to your our pastors and running with it with as a servant of god to to be alongside them to be discipled to grow is where home is that's going to help us get to the promised land <clears throat> if you want change read god's word I kept hearing that. I've been hearing that for a long time since uh, Sister Lauren and and Brother Sean came. So I picked up my Bible and I started reading it. And ever since then, I just keep hearing it. Although some of it might not make sense to me, the more I get into it, the more I read, the more I, I open myself God, God shapes us like a river. Pa uh, Bishop, Bishop said that, right? Brother Bish uh, Bishop, Bishop, Tony, Tony Miller, he said that. And as I am, I'm reading this, and I'm at a crossroads of my own. It ministered to me to keep reading, and not only to just read and hold on to that knowledge, but to share it, to share it with others, and to be confident in God's word. I don't have to be a poetic speaker. I don't have to be good with words, but just open my mouth. <clears throat> what shapes you empowers you, and that power gives you the ability to reach beyond. The, the revision, God doesn't have just 20-20 vision. He's got 40-40. He's doubled it. He's doubled it beyond what we can even see. <clears throat> It's okay to go back and pick up landmarks in the past. It's not okay to live in the past, but it's okay to go back and pick those up and, and continue reading the word to let our vision get focused yeah. so we can keep moving forward. Yeah. <clears throat> Pastor Irvin spoke for the release of control and to not be resistant. That's, he, he purposely, physically used, God used him to speak that to my husband and I. As he was holding my arm, I just, I felt, 
I can't, it, it, it's something that I can't even explain. The feeling is unexplainable. However, when he let go, God didn't let go. I can still feel it right now. God did not let go. So, whoops. What you perceive is what you receive. Do not procrastinate. Vision, you cannot procrastinate while you have vision. Get up, move, and do it. And that's what I have for you, ladies and, and gentlemen. And be more connected. Be more connected to help shape not only the church's vision, the vision that God has for this church, but to shape you. So. All right. So it was an amazing conference, guys. And we're not just saying that to, to get you guys to go next year. But one thing that my pastor said was uh, we had a pastor's uh, meeting really quick. And uh, he said, what if we didn't do this conference? Even if it was just a three-day conference, what if we didn't do it? Like the words that God spoke to us through these men were so powerful that, that you can't stop thinking about it. You know, and, and they were, they were, you had to go with a heart, with an open heart to expect open heart surgery. You know, when you, when you're going to go into open heart surgery, I don't know much about this, but obviously they got to open your heart and they got to do work inside your heart. And that's something that we had to go just expecting like, God, I, I know I needed to be refreshed again. Just because we get a refreshed one time, it's not going to hold it. You know, and so when you go to church, when you go to conference, you go expecting like, all right, Lord, what are you going to speak to me? This is for me today. Open up my heart to receive what you have to say to me. And one of the things like they were so awesome, each one. I didn't bring my notes up to to just give you the key points that I learned, what I learned. But one of the the most powerful nights was um, that really stuck to me because it it's it's uh how do i say it's an example of of me is uh the generations and that just like dang god wow it really wowed me like i can't get it out of my head because my husband and i are first generation as far as serving the lord my boys are the second generation so when we got saved we got saved we came to jesus our kids grew up in church, so they were more churchgoers. The third generation is the key. They are the key, the bridge to the third generation, which would be Ziggy and the kids that are future kids that are going to be here. So they're the key to that. So we have to focus on this second generation and disciple them and and build them to be the man or the woman of God. And and it's it's our responsibility as the first generation to keep on this second generation and it's their gen, their responsibility to to train this third generation. If that even makes sense, but that really like wowed me in a way where you know, I'm thankful for where all my kids are in their walk with God but they're the bridge to this new generation coming up. And it's so important and so key that we don't lose that second generation. We cannot lose them because whether they're serving God right now or they're not, God has placed people in, our, in your life for a specific reason. And we can't play, we can't. We can't mess around and be one way around them and one way uh, in another place. But it's important, and, and the way it was imparted in me, like the way I received it, I hope you guys understand, and I hope you guys receive it the same way. Michael, Aaron, Daniel, Jayla, uh, Isaac, Isaiah, they're all the second generation. So don't just see them as teenagers who are rebelling. No, they're not, because God still has a plan for them to reach the, the third generation. And another thing that Desiree was saying was um, Bishop uh, Miller, just, just their words were just beautiful, but Bishop Miller was saying that we're, we're, um, the Grand Canyon, number one, the Grand Canyon was formed by waters. 
okay and so if we're in a in a river and the waters are pushing us here and pushing up there it's shaping us to be who God wants us to be and so just it was just so awesome guys and we don't want you to go just to be like hey look at our whole church is here now that's not what matters but it is a real life changing experience and it's just not the same as a regular service so I encourage you guys my husband encourages you guys next year make plans get your tickets now if you can wait for the good deals to come up and just get that date reserved it was it was so good and and just the 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 joy the refreshing the the new thing that God has for us you know and and things that and this is something I did want to share real quick things that were going through in our life like we think things are going to be perfect when we're serving God but when things happen in our lives it's just a revision you know we see things the way we see them and this is how it should be this is how we want it to be but got to revision our life sometimes okay now it's this direction to where all right lord we're just going to keep following and it's okay if we get if we go through things it's going to be okay at the end god is always going to be with us and god is always faithful because he's a good god amen so the uh a lot of the church is not just our church was proclaiming vision for the year of 2020. And I believe a lot of churches, a lot of the body of Christ may have given up on that vision. That's why our conference was called Revision. Not refocus, but revision to do over. R, R A means to do over again. That vision that God had for you. And I don't believe that God changed his plan for you. We might change how we're going to get there, but the vision has always been the same. The mission has always been the same. You know, before the church was established, the mission was always there. The mission was there before the church was. Meaning, when Jesus said to his disciples, go into the world and make disciples, teaching them to obey. That's the mission. But the church wasn't really established until the book of Acts. That's when the church was established. So the mission actually came first and then the church. So I believe that Jesus Christ was going around and making disciples, teaching them to obey, teaching them to trust, teaching them to, to he was challenging them. He was uh, encouraging them. He was pushing them. He was, he was, he was there, man. So I encourage you in today's message, this message is specifically for you. So I want you to look at your neighbor and say, this message is for me. Amen. God is speaking to me. He's using me to speak to you. All right. So I want you to turn to the book of Luke. And we're going to get straight into the word. And uh, if you're joining us online, I encourage you, uh, follow along as we read along. But Know this, that the Lord is speaking to you and he's using God's living word, which is still alive, to bring transformation, change. Let it be eye-opening so God can change it. Amen? In the book of uh, Luke, chapter 5, it reads like this. <clears throat> so it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing in the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he, which is Jesus, got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put it out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. So let's get the picture. Jesus is preaching and people were gathering. People were coming because they wanted to know what's going on. They wanted to hear God's word. They wanted a touch from God. They came for a reason. See, because what was working for them before wasn't working enough, well enough. But when they heard Jesus speaking God's word, they were attracted to that because there was a hope within them that needed a change in their life. And I don't know if that's you right now, because think about it this way. What would motivate you to come up, get out of bed, 
get out of your comfort zone, dress up, change your clothes, drive all the way over here. You know, I, I, I know, Miss Ivy, you got a traffic jam coming over here, but you made your way over here, all right? <laughs> but what would motivate you to get out of bed and not just plug in? It's hope. And I believe that these people were desiring, because they had hope, but they were desiring for truth. And as the multitudes were coming, Jesus was looking at the circumstances. He's like, man, I got to preach to them. I got to preach to them. And they're just coming around. It's like, you know what I need? He goes, I need a stage. I need a platform. I need a pulpit. And he sees a boat. So he says to Simon, he goes, hey, you guys are done fishing. You guys are washing your nets. Let me borrow one of your boats. In fact, Simon, push me out a little further. So that means that Simon had to get in the boat with him and push him out. Right? And, you know, you think about it. Simon may have not been a churchgoer, may, you know, because he was, he was washing his nets. He was busy working, but at the same time, the master is asking for the boat. The master, the, the preacher is asking for a favor. He goes, man, all these people around, I better do a favor for him because I don't want people to be upset with me. So I'm going to help him out. And I'm just paraphrasing. I'm just, I'm just adding to it, right? Just adding to the circumstances. It's kind of like me if I were to ask you to do a favor for me, right? You know, would you, would you say no? I don't know. Maybe you would. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you wouldn't. But Jesus had that kind of influence on Peter. But Peter wasn't a disciple just yet. So as he's go, being pushed aside, he's being pushed out, Jesus started preaching to the people. But Simon answered, he goes, oh, I'm sorry, verse 4, he goes, When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon. So you got to understand, here he is. He's preaching to the people. And when he stopped, my sermon is over. He starts speaking to Simon. See, there's a difference between speaking, hearing the word of God, and being discipled by someone. See, this is when Jesus gets off, to, uh, gets off from being a pastor, preaching to multitudes, to taking time out to start discipling that one-on-one. -on -one. And this is what we do. This is our DNA as the, the, the Cure Church uh, here in Nashville, as the Cure Church in Kansas City, as the Cure Church, the network. This is what we are all about. It is discipleship. It is taking time out and not only being an influence, but taking the time out to teach them, to preach to them, but with patience and long suffering. In other words, Jesus will never beg you to follow him, but he will take the time out to preach to you, to disciple you and take that time out just to spend time with you. And he says, launch out into the deep and let down your nets. The first thing that he says, is, says, Peter, let's go to the deep. Peter, let's go to that place that you've been at before. And maybe you had failures before. Peter, I'm telling you, lay it, let your hair down. Stop. Stop. Take everything off. Be vulnerable. Let's go back into the deep. You know that place where you, you just came back from? and you had no victory in, let's go into the deep. I, I know you say that it's not the timing, Peter, but let, it's the timing. Because you say it's not the timing, Jesus is saying it is the timing. We're going to go back into the deep. We're going to go back to that place where you didn't want to come, that place that you just came in from. I want to talk in those sensitive areas in your life, Peter. Peter, the fisherman, tells him, and says, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. So the very first thing that he had to do was he had to row the master out there, right? And I, I believe, well, not row or maybe sail. I don't know what they had back then. But that, in my opinion, that took time. You just don't go from one destination to another destination. And especially if you're going to go to the deep, he probably had to share with him. He had to probably just laugh with him and talk to him. And then he probably even cried out, poured his heart to him and says, you know, Master, you don't know what I've been through. Let me explain to you my, 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 my heritage. Let me expect to, uh, explain to you my, my upbringing of, of how I was hurt before in the past and the damages that's been done and the people that offended me and the struggles that I've had. You don't know my husband. You don't know my wife and how they're just so hurtful to me and the words that they say and they take advantage of me 
And all this time, he probably can put a, could have been pouring out his heart. And you know what Jesus would have been doing? He would have been listening, taking the time just to show him who he was. See, Jesus wants to hear your cries. Jesus wants to hear your complaints. You know why? Because he's going to turn that around and he's going to come forth and says, look at what I can do, Peter. Let me go in the deep with you. And let me, let me hear those cries. See, the problem is we're not crying out to Jesus. The problem is we're not spending time with Jesus. The problem is we're not going into the deep with Jesus and taking that time and taking the master with us. The difference is, see, we put up excuses just like Peter did. And we tell, uh, we, we tell Jesus, Jesus, it just didn't work the first time. I tried it, Lord. I tried going to church. I tried giving my life to it. I said the prayer. I got baptized, but things didn't change, Lord. What's it going to take? Here the fisherman is telling the carpenter, I know what needs to be done here. But nevertheless, I will let down my net. And when they had done this, when he was obedient, a great number of fish there, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. Man, I'm telling you that Jesus showed up. I'm telling you that that, 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 that very thing that you were asking for, that very thing that you were praying for because of your obedience, Jesus showed up. And there was a great multitude of fish that started tearing down their net. The blessing was so big that it was tearing down their net. Here's the problem. Peter was instructed to lay down your nets. And he says, I'll lay down a net. Right? It got so big and it was tearing apart that Peter started waving all these other boats. Because every time God's going to do something in your life, there's going to be people straggling around. It's like, what's going on? It's kind of like this. You know, you're just like, you're being blessed. You're going to go to church. I'm, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to get that close, but let me, let me see what's going on. Right? You know, it's like, I'll go to church, but I won't go to the altar call, you know, where God wants to touch me. But I want to go to church. I want to just check it out. I remember my younger brother would always invite me to church, man. And I didn't want to go, but I kind of like, I wanted him to invite me. So because at one time I did want to go, it's like, man, he better beg me so I can want, <laughs> have an excuse to go. And that's what was going on here. It's like, what's Peter doing out there way in the deep? It's, it's not fishing time, but he's out there with the master. It's like, let's just go check this out. Let's get in our boats and like kind of be close. And all of a sudden you see Peter. He's like, what's going on with that guy? He's waving. Get over here. We got too much fish. Come, there's a blessing over here. Get over here, right? Right? I mean, you got to see. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's going on? Peter's getting crazy. He's, I think he's telling us he's getting blessed. Oh, my goodness. Let's get over there. And they're rowing. They're getting their nets laid out. They're throwing it out there. Hey, man, whatever's left over, we're going to grab for ourselves, man. You know, it's like he went to church. It's like we might as well get some too, right? But all that blessing was really intended for Peter because of his obedience because of your obedience your family is going to be blessed those that are around you are going to be blessed they're going to see the blessing on your life and you're going to start sharing it right don't count don't despise these little times that you're just here when only 15 people show up for church right don't despise it you're going to be blessed your family's going to be blessed and this is how Jesus operates. This is how God operates. He doesn't just come after you, but he comes after you and your family. And he uses you in the process. Right? So, I mean, could you imagine? You're in the boat. And you're getting crazy. Because of all this fish. You know why he was waving? Don't let this blessing go away from us. Get over here and get some. Come on, guys. Get your blessing. Come on. It's time. Wow. Man, could you imagine Peter's? That would freak me out. That much blessing. See, because the fish represented money. He was a businessman. He says, they singled to their partners in the other boat to come out and help them. And they came and filled both boats, both boats with fish. Because you know why? The blessing was so much they were sinking. 
It's like, whoa, God, you're too good to me. This is why I fall on my knees. You are just too good to me. I was blessed. You know, I, I did a, a little live video on my Facebook, and I had nothing to talk about but other aside from just being blessed. I, you know, because of this COVID situation, they can't sit my whole family. I am too blessed. They can't sit my whole family on one table. Amen. So I'm taking a video. Like, look, at, I got my family here. Then I got my family behind me. Then I got my friends on that table. It's like, it's weird with this COVID thing. It's like, you know, you don't understand. You got a church in here, buddy. You got to sit us all together because you want to say, you want to separate us? It doesn't matter. We're going to be, you know, it's like we're sitting over there. Chris is over there. And it's like, Chris, what are you doing over here? You're over it's supposed to be over there, but we're a church. We're a family. We're like, it doesn't matter. They can't separate us. We're trying, they're trying to separate us on how we're, you know, you gotta eat over here, you gotta eat over there, we gotta follow all these COVID guidelines. But we're too big. We've been blessed. And that's what my video was about, just talking about the blessing is too big. All I could say is just be obedient, be faithful to God. God's going to take care of you. Yeah, the food was great. Yeah, the fellowship was good. But the fruit, did you see the fruit? Did you see the fish? It's just, man, all because we were obedient. Amen. All because we were obedient. I was sharing earlier this morning with uh, Miss Judy as well as Miss Sheree that I went back to go see the house that me and my wife gave up to we, so we can come here. See, because in a perfect world, when we get announced in 2014 to come out to Nashville, we're coming out in 2015, we would, in a perfect world, we were buying a house, we would sell the house and then come out here. But I didn't want to be in a predicament where, man, the house is going to dictate when I'm coming out. I felt called. I felt ready. I'm, I felt like on fire, like, Lord, I'm coming to Nashville. This is the best time to do it during spring uh, break, and the weather's going to be perfect, and we can make this move. So we gave up the house just so we can come here to Nashville. There was nobody here waiting. There was no parade. But we're coming to Nashville with a vision, with a thought, right when, when I'm unloading the vehicle, I see somebody and I am started preaching to him and I started telling him, this is why I'm here. I'm a church plant. We're going to start reaching souls for, uh, for Jesus. Hey, would you like to come to my church? We're going to start having it inside my house. Would you like to come? In fact, there's no reason for you. You live right above me. You'll probably hear some music. We're going to be singing to Jesus. Hey, uh, so would you like to be part of it? He says, no, no, I, don't, I, don't, I appreciate it. But no, but you see the vision? You see the thought? I mean, five years later, here we are. No more inside a house, amen? God gave me a vision and just, God's just expanding it. So I went back to the house where we had, in two, we, we had bought it in 2008. And I apologize if I skip words it's because I'm excited, right? And then I went back, I had to drop off Daniel to old friends of ours. And uh, I go, man, I'm just gonna check out my house. Man, the house looks beautiful. The new owners are taking care of it. That tree that always was the ugliest one, he finally cut it up. He always, he finally did what I wanted to do, right? And that my parking spot was like, kind of like dipped and everything. He cemented everything. It looks nice. This area of my house where it always kind of like showed the trash. He put a fence on there. It's like, wow, he made it look beautiful. It's like, wow, he did a great job. And I'm like, man, that used to be my house, right? But I, I would give that up again in a heartbeat in comparison to what God has given me here in Nashville. Amen. Come on. Come on, somebody. You know, we have, we, out of obedience, I would rather give that up. I would rather forsake it. And this is what happens right here. Um, it's leading to my next point. When Simon Peter saw this, he saw this blessing. He fell down at Jesus' knee. He says, depart from me. I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of the fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to him, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to the land, 
they forsook all and followed him. That word forsook means abandon. In a heartbeat, I would abandon everything that I had in Kansas City just so I can be in the will of God. I, the reason why I'm, I know I'm in the will of God is because in 2010, God's will was for me to come here in Nashville. He spoke to me. He voiced it to me. I heard the voice. I go, this is God. But then because of the voice, I had to see a vision. I had God given me a vision. So right now I'm here to let you know, even though I'm still renting an apartment, I'm living in victory. Right? I, I, we are in victory. So if God is speaking to you to let go of cer certain things, and sometimes you do. As individuals, you have to let go of certain things, certain bad habits that you're holding on to money you're holding on to right you you have more trust in money than you do in jesus your careers your college you're pursuing college or whatever the, the place may be the thing may be relationships right uh that you know that uh you're, you're tr trying to have on hold on to certain relationships uh and you just don't want to let that go let god's voice speak to you because there's a vision behind it and you're missing out on all this victory that god has for you See, Jesus does not beg anybody to spend time with him. Right? But he throws it out there. He speaks it. He's telling you right now to put away your excuses. It's like, what's stopping you from going into the deep? What's stopping you? He goes, because I know there's a catch out there. I know there's, there's a blessing out there for you. See, the flesh, when Jesus is telling them that you're going to be a fisher of men, you're going to be a fisher of men, that's the voice. It's up to us to revision that. See, because when we say revision, it's because right now, maybe your vision was for a house like mine. I had a three-bedroom house. It's like, man, my vision would have been to cut down that tree. Uh, spend some money and get in all the cemented just like that guy did. And spend more money and work some overtime and get that fence up like I've always wanted to do. Maybe that was my vision. But God is saying, no, I want a, I want a new vision. I want you to revision and I want to speak this out to you, right? And it's like, oh man, Lord, I'm okay with that. You know, he's like, you want me here in Nashville? I'm okay with it. I, I, I had a, you know, it's God when you not only just make it an impulse decision, you know, it's God when you and your wife make the right decision, right? And then I, I went, that's when I went out and got my wife and we brought her back here on a, on a uh, Christmas holiday and she kind of took a look at it. And she says, yeah, I feel good. So I started speaking it. Then I spoke it for four years until my pastor seen the vision he goes okay that's your vision he goes i'm going to support it i'm going to back it up and that's when he announces to come out here see the flesh will have you see what's uncomfortable that's why it's important that you see god's vision see the flesh will tell you you don't want to go you you it's going to be uncomfortable for you you're going to have to start all over which we did uh, you're going to have to sell all your furniture which we did you know, uh, you're, you're, you're going to have to, uh, you know, buy new furniture, which we did. You know, you're going to lose your job. You're going to you're going to have to start from scratch. You know what? When I first came out here, I had to work two jobs. My first job didn't pay me enough, you know, because it was like they only started me off at four hundred dollars a week. And then the, anything else I would uh, make was based off of commission. So if I didn't sell, I didn't eat. You know what I mean? Or my kids didn't eat. It, it's like, you know. It's like, guys, we're going to fast. God called a fast. <laughs> like, no, no, he didn't call a fast, no. Uh, then I had to go out and work this other job at where um, here I am. I'm working at Twice Dailies, working a part-time job. And it's like, man, it's like, man, I have to hand these guys beer, the al all these alcoholics coming in here, last minute smokes and stuff like that. I go, I know, I'm going to put a, a flyer of my church inside their bag. So it's free, don't worry about it. You know, it's all, it's free. It's an invitation to church. Uh, but those are the things that we had to do 
we had to work hard and sometimes we had to work harder just so we could see this vision come place come to play and the flesh will always tell you don't do it Mm -mm. don't give because then they want you to give more you show up at 10 o'clock, that's good enough. And then, oh, Pastor Maria wants us to be there at 9 so we can pray. I can pray at home. You know, that's comfortable, right? <laughs> did, did you guys get your text? <laughs> no. <laughs> right? It's like, you know, but prayer does work, right? There's, there, there's an acronym. Yeah, come on, come on. See, we need to pray. Seriously, we do. We, we need to show up early. See, because sometimes we don't hear from God unless we clean out our ears, you know, until we get to that area where we're not being distracted by what feels good. You know what I mean? Of course, we understand it's a sacrifice. We're not trying to push you to do something that we're not doing ourselves, but there's a blessing behind it. There's fish out there in the deep. Amen. See, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 18, people were looking for comfort when it came to serving Jesus. And when Jesus saw in 8, verse 18, Matthew, it says, And when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave a command to depart to the other side. Then a certain scribe, a certain religious churchgoer, somebody from another church, has all the apparel, has a nice suit, comes up to him, is like, man, teacher, he goes, I'll come to you, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus says, I'm not going to beg you. He goes, but I got to be real honest with you. He goes, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. His head. Uh, you want to follow me? I don't know where I'm going to sleep tonight. You still want to follow me? Right? You guys you guys with me? Or did you guys tune out like this guy? <laughs> I mean, think about it. The flesh will say, okay, this is the real vision, guys. This is it. I, we're, we'll probably sleep on each other. It's like, you know what I mean? We're not going to, we're not going to have a place to lay. We, that's not our, we don't have a 401k plan. We don't have a retirement plan. We might skip a couple of paychecks, guys, if nobody gives. Because, see, we're full-time missionaries. That's what Jesus was trying to explain to him. Maybe somebody will, we go into town, maybe somebody won't let us sleep there. We'll have to be on the streets. So that guy thought about it, and he went back to his vision. He didn't go with Jesus' vision. So this vision will attack your trust. Then another one of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. You know, what he was saying is, let me bury my father. You know what he was saying is, Pastor, I I'll follow you, but you know, my father's not dead yet. Let me, let me, let me be successful. Let me get his inheritance first. Let me have that family time first. You know, let, let me see my kid graduate. You know, I mean, we left our kids. Me and my wife, we left two of our kids. My son was having, had a grandson. It's like, I could have said, let, Lord, I want to go to Nashville, but let me see my grandson, go, you know, ha at least go to through kindergarten. Let me see my grandson do his first t-ball game. Right? So that's what this guy was saying. Lord, let me bury my dad. You know, I'll follow you, but let, you know, I got family. I want to spend time with them. Let me, let me bury him first. Jesus wasn't trying to be harsh, but he goes, if you want to do the will of God, if you want this vision that I have for you, it needs to be first. See, because whatever vision that you, God has for you, and you're seeing it, it has to be first. But the, er, your flesh and other people will tell you, no, look at it this way. They're trying to get you out of the vision. The past will have another vision. Your past 
will try to say, you didn't finish it before. And it's going to try to distract you of your vision from God. So what if you messed up? Who cares? Did you know that God uses messed up people? All right? He does. Did you know that your pastor's all messed up? Right? I, I don't have it all together. I didn't have it all together. I don't know how to plug all this stuff up. <laughs> you know? Uh, you know, you know, there was a soundboard. You guys remember the soundboard, Ms. Ray? You notice it's not here? You know where it's at? It's right there in his lap. You know, I don't know how to do none of that stuff. I'm not perfect. You ever notice, you guys notice our carpet? It's not perfect. But I can still walk on it. Who cares? Who cares if it's not perfect? You know? It's so what if it's two shades? I'm still preaching the word of God, right? God uses imperfect things. You might say, man, I'm going to, I'll go to church, but as long as it's the right church, it's perfect people. You know, people are messed up. People are messed up. Did you know that you use imperfect things? Anybody have an iPhone? Right? Did you know that this is, they sold it to you knowing that they had some bugs in it? Did you know that? Who has an iPhone? Mm, you bought an imperfect phone. Right? But check this out. In the middle of the night, iPhone will try to say, hey, there's a glitch on your phone. We want to upgrade it. So we need to fix it. And we need to download some stuff to make it more perfect for you. And what do you do? You give them permission. Okay, I want a better phone. Okay. Right? So when you see somebody like a Daniel, Aaron, Michael, you see them up here, it's like, they're not perfect. <laughs> Pastor's kids. It doesn't matter. God's going to download something in their life and get them to that point where they're going to be perfect. Amen? If you're not perfect, God will download some stuff. It's like God's downloading some stuff right now. Right? And God's saying, all right, now restart your phone. Like Pastor, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Irvin Rutherford. Get ready. <laughs> I mean, you got to see this guy. This guy, how old is this guy? Yeah, I don't know. He was just talking. He's up there, man. He's up there. Yeah, he just get on stage. This guy's like, you know, but he was still going for it. So it's time to restart your phone. It's time to restart your vision. And get that revision. As my wife was saying, or was it Desiree was saying about the rivers forming, being formed by the water. Tony Bishop said, people that make noise usually don't make a difference. And he, used, he said, whatever voices are informing you, are forming you. Does that make sense? Be careful what you're listening to. Be careful who you're listening to. I was speaking to, uh, I think it was Mr. Ray. Encourage you guys, you ladies, reach out to my wife. Call her up. Spend that one-on-one -on -one time. Because when we get to the point where we're going to be big, it's not that we're not going to have time for you. It's that there's going to be a shifting where you are now discipling other women. This is how it works. You will be discipled. You will be used. And you're going to say, well, I'm not ready. I'm not perfect. It's, it's okay. God's going to download something on you. Then you're going to restart it. You're going to revision. Then you're going to start pouring out, pouring out God's voice. I gave you ladies some cards. They're not for you. They're for you to hand out. All right? Invite somebody to a great catch, to a great feast. We're going to be servants of God. We're going to be a discipleship church.
We're thankful that uh, Chris and Desiree, you know, Chris and Desiree are not coming for us just because uh, it's like, oh, we need them there. No, they came for themselves that they could hear God's voice. And they got blessed. They got, they got more of a blessing than we did, I think. <laughs> you know, you know uh, be part of what God's doing. But be, be careful who you're listening to and what's feeding you. Uh, but before we close, I want, I, want to, I want to pray for you all. If you guys feel challenged by this message to be discipled, I want you to stand up right here. And you want, when I say you want, you want to be challenged, I want to think about it this way. If that's you, you want to be discipled. God didn't ask you to be a, 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 a Christian. God asked you to be a disciple. If that's you, ladies, I want you to come out and just stand right here. You're making a declaration to say to me, to God, to everybody here, say, I am willing to be discipled. I am willing to get out of my comfort zone. I am willing to go into the deep. I am willing to talk about those things I didn't want to talk about that nobody else knew about. I'm willing. Me and my wife. Come on. Amen. I'm sorry. I just want to say, <clears throat> even before he asked that question to you ladies, God already had put in my heart that every Friday, I want to do something with you guys. And I, it's going to be called, Do You Want to Be Discipled? Even before he said that, that's why I felt the need to. So you don't have to be there, but we're going to do something. We're going to cheat. We're going to do something, God, ladies. We're going to shift and we're going to change. And it may be uncomfortable for you ladies. It will be uncomfortable for me. But it's not only going to be me discipling you ladies. We're going to disciple each other. And we're going to plan for that every Friday. If you want to be discipled, be part of this. Amen. Amen. All right, so you guys are ready for this. All right, with every hand raised, and just like Pastor Irving Rutherford, you're not doing this as an act of surrender. You're doing it as an act of receiving. So I would like you to turn your hands this way. I'm receiving. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just repeat, Heavenly Father, today I receive what you have in store for me. I'm thankful that I have a good God who cares for me and only gives me good things. I'm thankful, Lord, that you want to go into the deep with me. Today, God, I give it up. I forsake everything to follow you. My vision is your vision. And if I'm out of focus, help me, Lord, to revision the original vision in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's just go ahead and uh, play something real quick. Amen. Let me just pray for y'all. Father, we love you, God. We bless you this day, Lord. I pray for these women, Lord God, that came up this day, God, to capture the vision, to capture hope, Lord God, to reconnect, Lord God, to seek your face, God, to seek your presence this day, Lord. I pray that you would touch them, that you would bless them, Lord God. Today, Father, speak to them, Lord God, like you've never spoken to them before, Lord God. And when the flesh tries to rise up, Lord God, when they try to be comfortable, Lord God, I pray, God, that you would take them into the deep, Lord God. Speak to them, Lord God. Let them have a catch, Lord God. Let them have a net break right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that you would receive a net breaking experience. That your nets would be so full right now that you're going to have to call up people. Call your neighbors and say, look, guys, God's been too good to me. I, you need to get on this. You need to get some of this. Amen. You need to get on board of this. God's blessing me too much. Amen. I encourage you. There's no reason. There's no reason for you not to know who your neighbor is. 
Amen. It, it was it was a trip. I, uh, you know, because I, I, my kids, I, I, I tell you, my kids know a lot more than me technology wise. They're a very smart generation. But I he asked my older son, I go, do you know your neighbors? And he says, no. I go, my best advice to you right now, at this moment in time, get to know more people. Get to befriend them, more people, right? You're going to need other people. You don't get to heaven by yourself. You, you get to heaven with other people, through other people. So I encourage you right now, give them a friendly invitation. That's why I gave you that flyer. Invite them to church. Get to know them. If they don't want to come to your church, if they already go to another church, be their friend. Let them know that you are a Christian. You, you serve a living God. Amen. And that you are always there for them if they need your help. Be a servant. Put on the apron. Help them out. Amen. Come on. Come on. Serve God. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we just got to do one more order of service online. Amen. But, uh, uh, we want to take up today's God's tithes and your offerings. So if you have uh, a, a tithe, if you have an offering that you would like to uh, be part of what's going on here at the Cure Church, uh, you know, my church already knows what to do. <laughs> They're already going back to their uh, their, their purses, their, their wallets. And uh, if you want to be part of something that God is doing, I encourage you. Let God speak to you in your offerings. Let God speak to you in your tithe. Your tithe, uh, we always say, should go to your local storehouse, which is your local church. But if you would like to give an offering to the Cure Church Nashville, you can reach us by Venmo and just say, hey, this is for the Cure Church Nashville. Uh, this is an offering and to see what we're doing out here. We're, we're still building in the building process, in the renovating process. And uh, we are uh, trying to reach people for Jesus. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. That's all right. All right. Well, it, it, when you do this, you're investing in other lives. You're investing in other people because people have no hope and they need somebody. They need a place that they can call their home. We also uh, want to just share that in the event you would like to come out and visit us, we do have a website out. Uh, gives us uh, a schedule of our, all our times. I know we have Facebook, Instagram, but we do have a website I, uh, out and people are starting to visit us. So, uh, man, God is doing good things. God is reaching people all over the world. Amen. Um, let me pray for the offering. Can you pray for the offering? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on. All right. Well, uh, that will do it uh, for uh, our people that are watching online. We thank you for joining us and then uh, get connected for Wednesday service at seven o'clock as we're still going through the book of Acts. I think we're in Acts chapter 14. All right. So tune into that as we log in. Uh, so we're good. All right. Uh, now it's time to